In this video, we're going to be walking through the different options you have for creating PDF files from your Bubble application. There are different approaches here, and you want to choose the method that makes the most sense for your app. Because if you don't, you could end up with a system that's overcomplicated, or you could be missing out on helpful capabilities to properly format a PDF for your app. So take a look as we walk through a few different examples. Now, no matter what, all of these methods are going to involve an integration of some sort, either a plugin, a free plugin that can help you convert your design into a PDF file or a, uh, an integration with an API so that you can communicate with a third party service that can also help you create uh, these PDF files. Typically, if you're working with a third party service, it usually means that you're managing templates with them. So they're going to be responsible for creating the PDF uh, by filling those templates with your data. The first one is using a plugin that's going to help you create a PDF purely through workflow actions. So you're not using a template, you're not even referencing a design in your canvas. It is all defined in the workflows. The second option is by creating a screenshot of your design in your bubble application. So for example, if I take this group here and I wanted to convert literally just this group into a PDF, there's a plugin that can help you with that. Okay, so basically what you see is what you get and you get a PDF file out of that. The third option here is similar to our screenshotting uh, method, but this is gonna have a third party service generate that screenshot and convert that into a PDF for you. The benefit here is that it can happen without a user being present, right? It's server side. So if you have uh, recurring PDFs that need to be created, this is a great solution for that. Again, because the user doesn't have to have their page open. And then the final method here, uh, again, and keep in mind that I, I am going to be talking about a specific service, but there are many other services that work very similarly. So if you need to shop around, feel free to do so. Um, it, with this final one, we're going to be talking about DocSpring, which is a good example of a third party system where you can manage templates. You create the templates with them. They hold on to your templates and all you're doing from your app is sending data to them and they will populate the template with your data and send back the final PDF that was created uh, back back to your application. OK, so let's take a closer look at uh, these different options so you can understand what the differences are. The first one that has you creating PDFs through workflows is using a plugin called PDF Conjurer. This is a free plugin and everything about your PDF is defined through workflow actions. I'm going to show you right now what I mean here. This is our green flow. So I'm going to go into my workflows. The work is in the workflows. OK, it is up to you to design your PDF through these actions. Um, I have this plugin installed. And so you can see under my element actions here, I have all these different uh, options for designing different components of my PDF. And you can see here in this example, I have 21 actions to create a very simple PDF. OK, that's it. It's really basic. It's a little rough around some of the edges here. I would probably want to align things a little bit differently. And you can if you spend a little bit more time with it. So this very basic display took 21 actions to put that together. And keeping in mind, too, that each one of these actions has all sorts of settings that, uh, you know, you need to go through and configure. So what are the benefits of this? Well, first of all, you're not dependent on communicating with a paid third party service. So that certainly can keep your costs down. Um, second, it's actually quite fast. Now, some of the areas where you might be turned away from this is it does take a, a lot more trial and error to get a PDF to be formatted exactly how you want, because the only way you can really preview this is to run the workflow and just see the file that gets created. There's really no kind of real time um, you know, uh, preview of what you're doing until you actually run it. If you're um, not as confident in, uh, you know, composing all of these actions together, if it just feels too tedious for you, you might want to consider some of these other options. OK, so the second option we have here is more of a what you see is what you get uh, type of flow. So if you're more comfortable in the design canvas and you're able to uh, lay out and design the exact look and feel of the PDF, this might be a better solution for you here. Uh, PDF and Screenshot Pro, this is also a free plugin. It works really well. Um, and this actually gives you the ability to screenshot either your entire page and convert it to a PDF um, or an element. So what I've done is I have a group just as my example uh, and anything that's inside of my group is what will convert into the PDF. So the workflow for this one, this is my blue workflow. When I click on this one here, all this is doing is triggering one action that is communicating with my element. You know, so I have a couple of dimension settings and quality file name, all of those. 
uh, and it will capture the, the, the design of it and convert it into a PDF. You can see as soon as this is captured, I can immediately open it. There it is, all right? So there's my PDF. It's, it's literally just that group. So if I wanted to target the entire page, I would have identified that differently um, in the actions being used. Now, the third option, like I said, is very similar um, to the screenshotting option we just went through. This is going through a third-party service. So um, Select PDF has been around for quite a while. Bubbles had a plugin for this one uh, for a long time. Now, you do need to get an API key from them. This is a paid service. So once you've installed that plugin into your application, you'll put in your API key. And what you do there is you'll still design a page in your application, okay? Um, and let me go over to the workflow here. And you're gonna run an action that comes with the plugin to say, okay, go run that page. In this case, my page is called profile um, and generate a PDF out of whatever you see on that page, right? You're having this third party service do this on their servers. They're gonna run your page and create a PDF out of it. So it's the same as doing like the page level screenshot. Now, the fourth option here is uh, with a service called DocSpring. So this is the more formal um, uh, option. Their pricing is higher um, because there's a lot more that this uh, service can do for you. Primarily, they manage templates. So they've got this uh, tool here where you can come in and fill in all of the spots that need to be populated with dynamic information. So basically, you're tagging different sections of the document so that when your app sends data to the service, the, the, this service knows where to fill in all of your data and it will create your custom PDF now out of this template and send it back to you. So this is another paid service. You get an API key from them. Um, Bubble has a plugin for this to make that connection nice and easy so you don't need to work with the API connector necessarily, right? So this is the plugin action. So you would provide your template ID. You can create you know, however many templates you'd like and then you would pass all of the information through your own custom definitions, right? You go through that template, you say, I need, a, I need a name here, I need a date here. You just label them and you'll pass it in like this. The result of this action is that new PDF file. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, definitely check out the content you see on the screen right now. These videos will help you better build and launch your app and a lot more quickly too.